Uh, what I also want to ask you about was so back when I, I like first looked at Distribox, you supported Docker Pod, uh, Docker and Podman, which for the most part work in fairly similar ways. But you also have this other thing now called Lillipod. Um, what what is what is that, and why why? Yes, this is uh, just why. Uh, why is why not? Fair. But <laughs> uh, yeah, mainly was. Um, a project that I started to really learn all the bits and bobs mm -hmm. underneath to for for how the container works. So mm -hmm. uh, I just wrote my own container manager, mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> it actually seems to work uh, decently. Mm -hmm. And the idea was to have something with as less as few dependency as possible to run. Mm -hmm. It's like a s single statically compiled binary in Go. So it's don't really have any dependency uh, except, you know, busy box. Mm -hmm. I pretty much think anyone has a car utils mm -hmm. on a system. Um, but the, the idea was to have a nice fallback for system where you want to run your distro box or whatever. But installing Podman or Docker is pretty huge, right? You have many dependencies, you have configurations to do and stuff like that. So with, with Lillipod, is plug and play. You don't have any configuration to do any dependency. Mm -hmm. Obviously, those, like, I don't even think one-tenth of the things that Podman does is even probably less. But mm -hmm. the point is doing what this box needs. It's mm -hmm. not doing what Podman does. Right. And it, and it does, and um, I'm happy about it. Need to, uh, yeah, update that one too. <laughs> um, there are many things to. It, it's like a really uh, alpha release, beta release, whatever. It's very, very new, very new, and it's uh, more like an emergency latch for when you cannot run one of the big two, <laughs> and. Um, on, the, on that front, I also developed uh, this Podman launcher, which is just, you know, using Go, Go embed FS to just embed everything, every dependency of Podman inside it mm -hmm. and just run it as a single binary. So also that one works. It's mm -hmm. like a very big binary. It's like I think 50, 60 megabytes because everything is inside. It's, it works like an, e an exe on Windows, right? It's mm. actually just a, an archive, a self-executing archive, but in this case of Podman. Mm -hmm. So there is that one too. And um, then I discovered that also it was mainly for a system like the Steam Deck where you didn't have Podman, Docker, stuff right. like that. And installing them is a bit of a pain because at the next update, it, it gets deleted. Mm. <laughs> so... I wanted something that runs from your home and, you know, stays there. Uh, but I think now they are shipping Podman by default, so it's uh, already a big thing. Uh, where was it? Yeah, I I didn't know about that until I saw... Like, the Steam Deck just... I don't know what the developers are doing, but they just add random cool things from time to time. Like, not too long ago, they were like, Here, have NixOS package support. Like, why? Sure, okay, <laughs> let's have it. Then they're like, oh. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, then like, here, have DistroBox. I know you said it was like a really old version of DistroBox, but like, even so, they just... Yeah, it's like 1.4. Mm. Like, the fact they just added it to the system. They're like, ah, oh, okay, yeah. Uh... I was surprised. Because <laughs> before it... They didn't know anything, so... Like, before you had documentation for it, but it... It's, yeah... It's still, like, nice to just have it there and just not have to really think about it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So especially uh, on a system where, which is in atomic and image-based, but you cannot do the image. Mm. <laughs> like in the case of the Steam Deck. Um, you, I, I think it's a perfect example of how this image-based stuff really benefits the OEMs. Mm. Because it's... Uh, incredibly easy for them to have a 
known golden state for the system. Obviously, they control the hardware, but this way they also control the software because everyone has the same version, mm -hmm. more or less. Everyone has the same, you know, set of packages by default because every update resets them, actually. Mm -hmm. So they can also just say, hey, something is misbehaving, just reset it. Mm -hmm. which is not a given in the Linux world, even the Windows world, to be honest, but just factory reset is not a thing, mm -hmm. which is, I think, it, for the OEMs would be the first thing, like having a factory reset button like Android does, uh, where you just wipe it and only the system is kept in its original state, which is a known state. Um, it makes also reproducing issues easy. Because, for example, already now, I think, um, for image-based OS like um, Vanilla OS and uh, Fedora, doing a bug report when, where you explicitly, explic explicitly uh, <laughs> uh, say, I am on this version, mm -hmm. and these are the overlaid packages or added packages. Me, as a developer, I can reproduce the exact system, just putting the same version and same packages, mm -hmm. we are on the same, pretty much the same system, except maybe the hardware. And, and you can already figure out, okay, this is an hardware problem, a software problem. I can reproduce or not, or stuff mm -hmm. like that. It's much easier. And yeah, I mean, uh, it goes back to, the, to what we were saying before, where but you know in which st in which state is your system. Mm. You don't know your Arch Linux in which state it is, right? And at least knowing it is a good thing. <laughs> well, also just having that really convenient system rollback there, because most uh, atomic systems do provide like at least two or three of the previous images. So if for any reason the latest image is broken in some way like maybe they decided to ship an application and they didn't test something properly and it, the application's broken in most cases you can just roll back and just it works and then maybe the future version yeah, yeah. is uh working then you just go straight to that one and your user like uh, your user data is completely separate from that so like obviously you can do this with a uh non-immutable system you can have a root that is separate from your home directory and you can reinstall the iso and go to a different version and this is doable it's just a lot of extra work that with a system like this there are these ideas put in place that you can just very conveniently make use of and i i, I think it's really cool and i i do understand yeah, that i mean it's a I was going to say, like, for an oh, OEM, yeah. like, that makes a lot of sense why you'd want to do that. And okay. with, like, the factory reset, not just a factory reset, but just a system reset. So if the user did break something by installing overlay packages or something, you can just, like, fix the, the system by itself without breaking their user data. 